Let's stand then and sing together that wonderful hymn, Don't Take Your Masks Off. That's not the title of the hymn. Um, a wonderful hymn, Glory Be to God the Father. the greatness of our God and also our own weaknesses. Let's pray. Creator God, from the beginning we were part of a vision held lovingly in your heart. From the moment that you spoke and separated darkness from light, you created space where we might one day walk. From the moment your joy spilled out into the green and living things, your beauty was revealed for us to taste and to see. Creator God, for this world, beauty and majesty, passion and artistry, a green and pleasant place, we praise your mighty name. You have given us a world of beauty and we know that often we seem to do our best to spoil it. It's a world, God, where so many go hungry. It's a world, God, where so many are rich, yet unwilling to share. It's a world, God, where often we think all only of ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God. Forgive us for those times that your heart is saddened by our selfishness. For those times that we have no thought for others. No cares for anyone else but our own. And so we bring to you now in the quiet. The times when we've messed up. In our hearts, we know we messed up and we made poor choices. 
hear our personal confessions. Loving God, enable us to see this world anew, to see it anew as a gift from you, to be shared and nurtured, and those who live on it to be loved and to be cared for. We pray that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of us, your disciples. And all of that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for the readings and thanks to the choir. You lot never got a clap like Claude did. <laughs> Give them a clap. <laughs> Didn't want you to feel out. <laughs> this is a great hymn, 511, Your Hand, O God, Has Guided. Let's stand and sing this.
missing. Yeah. So it's you getting me into trouble. Still a great song though, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. Let's pray. We come, Lord, because we need you. But we also come because we want to serve you. And we come to try to find out how we can do that. So open our hearts and our minds and bring your spirit down upon us. So we can hear your message for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the New Testament from Paul's letter to the Ephesians this morning concentrates and focuses on two things. One is the growth and unity of the church and the second is the growth and maturity of its members. And the passage also states that all members are to be honoured, respected and nurtured. No exceptions. Every individual is integral to the whole. And Paul recognised how important that was for the church at that time. And Paul also knew that it was unique because it wasn't what the world was like at that time. And the same situation applies to the church today. We must honour and take care of each other. We must treasure each person. We must respect the gift or gifts of each person. And if we can't immediately see the gift of each person, then we should look closer for it and get to know them and get to tease out what their gift and what your gifts might be. And that's a bit of a contrast to the society that we seem to live in today, where people seem to shove and manipulate to get on top of one another to get one over somebody else. But as our song that we've just sang says, the church of Jesus Christ is one body. There's no distinction between different social classes, no different layers of importance. There are no high flyers, no high or middle management or lower tiers of workers. In the church, there is not first class and second class members. We are all as one in Christ Jesus. No exceptions. And any congregation or denomination which does not honour the gifts of each and all, which does not seek the unity of Jesus Christ in all things, well, maybe that denomination or that congregation has lost its way a bit. That oneness that I refer to is absolutely central to our faith. And there's no more important purpose than that. However, it's not easy to achieve. And we need to work hard to try to achieve it constantly. And it won't happen overnight. Paul insists that the various gifts of different church members are for the good of all to equip each other for our ongoing service to our Lord Jesus Christ. And by using our gifts to assist one another, we make progress. We are meant to be growing and maturing. 
both as separate beings and as congregations. And unless we do continue to grow and mature, the truth is we'll be of little use to the world. And that's what Christ calls us to do, to be of use to the world. But what is genuine growth and maturity? And how can we measure that? How can we measure that we are growing and how we are maturing? Well, I certainly don't think that we should assess personal growth by any of the value systems prized by our world round about us. You know that from the outside, the world can and will and does pass judgment on our church and our congregations. And sometimes the world gets it wrong. Sometimes the world identifies, for example, one particular high profile congregation or denomination and will heap praise on it and argue that it's hugely successful. And similarly, the world, often through the media, may also look on other struggling congregations and then rank them as failures. But in the eyes of God, it may be quite the opposite. The small battling churches may be the ones really achieving growth in God's terms. And when you think about that, you might turn your mind to the Society of Friends or the Quakers, as they're sometimes known. They've never been a high profile church, never a powerful denomination, never had large numbers in their membership. But I'll tell you what, they've been big in spirit as they go quietly about their mission. And if you set the model of Jesus beside them, you'd be amazed. Because often, this relatively small network of believers achieve far more than the more visible and self-assertive denominations of our world. Actually, Jesus is the only test for our growth and our maturity. Forget the outward trappings. Our only template for success or failure is that loving person, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only certified measuring instrument for all our congregations and for all of us as individual members. And when we set our sights on him, including everything else, including indeed our knowledge of the Bible is secondary. And Jesus only ever gave us two rules. Love God and love your neighbor. And that's the test. It's as simple and as difficult as that. Great Christian leaders like Paul have got lots to share with us, as do folk who wrote like John and Peter and James. But every thought of what these writers wrote needs to be measured by nothing less than the rule of Jesus. Jesus must be the focus. Jesus Christ must be both our goal and our rule the way, the truth, and the light. That three-part phrase that we use often. And what it means is that Jesus is the goal and the rule. And Christ alone has the valid profile both for the maturity of congregations and their individual members. Jesus Christ is what it means to be an authentic human being. 
The example of Jesus is what it means to be a successful congregation. Jesus is the sole representation of true humanity. Humanity as God our Creator planned and continues to plan for it to be in the future. Some of our great Christian leaders certainly have provided us with huge inspiration. People like St. Monica of Africa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, closer to home, Mary Slessa of Dundee. Yet, but these are but imperfect seconds, flawed to a major or minor degree. And they too fall short of the fullness of the character of Jesus Christ. Because it isn't easy. But that's what we're out to achieve. Jesus is the sole specimen of true humanity. Jesus is the door to the treasury of grace where the resources of God's Spirit are stored. Stored and ready to be applied to our need within our denomination, within our congregations, and within our own lives. But we need to stay close together, not just with Jesus, but with one another. Because you know, there's no such thing as a solo Christian or a solo congregation. And if we want to make it our goal, we must support each other. We must have the challenge and encouragement of one another, of our fellow believers. And growth is not always easy. It can be dashed hard work. It can be painful. But that's the way that Jesus went. So I suppose the question is, if that's the way that Jesus went, should we, the people who claim to be his followers, not walk exactly the same path? In Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn is 695. Your love, O God, has called us here. offer God our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for other people. And let's pray. Gracious God, bless those who are looking in the wrong direction. Those who might be living in the past. Those for whom all the good days seem to lie far behind. Those who are trapped in nostalgia 
and those who live simply with memories. We pray for those who have allowed some sorrow to darken their whole horizon and to let the sun set on their hopes and dreams. For those who have allowed some disappointment to sour rather than let them grow. For those who have allowed some quarrel to create a gulf that they won't even try to bridge. We pray for those who are living in the future. For those who are always putting things off until a more convenient time. For those who are waiting and not working. For those who are hoping but not striving. For those who have mistaken dreams for deeds. We pray for those who think of their problems but who never think to turn to you. For those who tease at their worries till they cannot even sleep. For those who are conscious of their weakness, but have forgotten. We pray for those who seek their pleasures in ways that can only bring regret. For those for whom what they have and own and keep are the most important things in the world. For those who think money can buy all that they need, if only they had enough of it. For those who are driven by ambition. But that's personal ambition, and that will not let them rest. We pray for those who are such slaves of their work that their families hardly see anything of them, and those who drive themselves so hard that, that when they're at home they're so tired that they are irritable and just fall asleep. For those who have not time to rest and relax and enjoy the people that they love, doing ordinary things and sometimes simply doing nothing. We pray for those who are ill or in pain. We pray for those in hospital or receiving care at home. For those whom, for whom the way back to health is a long hard road. For those who know that there is no healing for them. That they may play out their last act with courage and dignity and faith. We pray for those suffering from memory loss and for their carers, for all who are suffering from mental health problems. Give them the support that they need and understanding and compassion from the wider community. Loving God, forgive those who hate. Forgive us for hating. Forgive people who don't like us. Loving God, we bring to you now in the quiet people that we know in our own lives, at work, in our communities, or at home, who are needing a helping hand right now. So we bring them before you and we ask you to help us to identify how we can be part of helping them to have a more fulfilling life. Hear our personal prayers for other people. Loving God, Bless each one of us, whatever our situation, and help us to set our hearts and minds and actions on what Jesus would have us do, and find in him a rock in which we can build our lives, our church, our congregations, and us as individuals. Here these are prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who Taught us our family prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. But deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed worship this morning. And I hope you have a really great time this afternoon, whatever it is you're doing. I don't think it's going to rain. So you can go for a run or something like that. Either on your legs or in the car. <laughs> Let's close our worship this morning by singing another great song, in 5 4 I heard the voice of Jesus say, and we'll all stand for this one. <laughs> And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, now and forevermore. Amen.